Hey guys, what's up? This is Ola. I hope you are doing good. Today we're going to show you some ninja chip, uh, nin ninja chips, ninja tips <laughs> around the layers panel and how if you come to understand how clipping masks and groups work, you can pretty much organize um, these layers any way you want this and really like customize where your effects and adjustment layers are working. Now this is all going to seem really confusing until I actually show you what the hell I'm on about. So what I have here is essentially um, pretty much, I'm just going to make this a flat picture. So we have we have a flat picture here and I have this this kind of like pink moon which I've just drawn which is as you can see from this little square, a shape. If you've watched my other tutorials you would know that, hopefully. And I'm going to select a gradient here and I'm going to do this and I am going to just create a gradient. Now the problem is is that we've created a gradient over the full layer. Uh, what we could do is we can control click this and make a mask and that will contain you know the effect to um, to the transparency which we've got from uh, our selection here which kind of works but what I'm going to do today is show you how to do this in a different way and what I've just done there is hold, held, sorry, I've done that really quick, I apologize. Um, we're going to create a clipping mask. So the, the way you can do this is you can right click and go to create clipping mask. Or you can hold alt in between the layers. And the genius thing between a clipping mask is you can turn it on and off at will, which is really useful. So um, there, I've turned it on. So what you can see is that there's a little down arrow and what this is saying is that I'm only going to be masked by this layer here and and so because all of this is transparent here on this layer if we have a look at it again because all of this is transparent none of this is going to be shown in that area the only area this layer is going to be shown is where you know we have a full area of color which is super useful because what this means is I can now create another layer go to gradient uh, make let's just say let's let's for arguments just make like white gradient and just kind of do this and again like maybe i want to contain this and oh my goodness if we go in between these two layers hold alt we can also clip that and this so it's kind of like they come uh, and you can stack as many layers as you want i could duplicate this again hold alt move this one around maybe slightly and uh, these are all going to adhere to the layer at the bottom of this stack which is really cool now taking this one step further you can see how this is already really useful because say I want to paint like a texture I'm going to hide these two here say I want to um, paint a texture onto my moon here and I want to keep it you know just within the the area of the moon as you can see I'm going out of here but just by adding a clipping mask we can see we can that we're not going to run over and that we can contain it and now let's see how this is useful and pro probably uh, and how we can take this one step further. So what I'm going to do is select these three now and we're going to drag them down into this little folder here called a group. Now a group is basically a way of surprise surprise grouping your layers and the reason this is useful is because by grouping the layers rather than baking them together, by baking them I mean this. Um, Let's just duplicate this. I'm going to hide this layer. I'm going to bring all these out. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast, but I'm, and this is all stuff that I've taught you in another lesson. So, um, okay, so we have our three layers. I can select all three of these and go to Layer, Merge Visible, or Control E. And what that will do is just like turn them all into one layer, which is, you know, kind of like what we're doing. The difference is I can't go back unless I do like Control Alt Z to come backwards. By grouping things into a group you are essentially creating one new layer which is what we've done if we move the group around. The new layer has you can now uh, as of like the, the last two versions you can add like layer styles to this layer so you know all this good stuff which we went over in one of the other lessons. Uh, you can add layer styles to groups which is super powerful and I'm going to hide that for now. You can go back in and say, you know what, actually this texture looks crappy. Let's get rid of it. And th the reason this is really powerful is that, like I said, it's a non-destructive way. So you can come back 
uh, I can undo that clipping mask, I can redo that clipping mask. When the clipping mask is done, the great thing is I can like now move this around a bit and say, oh, actually, maybe I want it here. And then maybe I want to create a new layer, just add a gradient here, that kind of thing, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, moving this one step further, why clipping masks are awesome is that if I create a new, let's say, um, gradient map, because, uh, and you should know by now what gradient map does because I've covered it in one of my other lessons. So let's say this is like, let's pick this pretty radical gradient here. And by holding Alt, you can see I can constrain the clipping mask, which would usually, as you, as you see, like usually a clipping mask will affect everything underneath it. But by constraining it with this to our group, we now have the power of being able to move our group around uh, you know move things in our group around we can change the colors on on the clipping mask to you know red or whatever we want basically uh, this blue gradient that as you can see what the way I'm teaching you this program is trying to kind of show you that the best way to do things is to do things so that you can always come back and so this is a great way to be able to colorize your artwork so now we're essentially colorizing everything in here using a gradient map and yet as you can see our scene at the bottom down here remains intact which means we can you know create a new layer uh, let's let's try and make a selection of this um, this tree down here uh, apologize let's just do it with the the yield magic wand yes that will do very nicely and what I'm going to do is create a new uh, fill. So what I've done here is just created a new tree. And then what I can do on this empty layer is just create a cl clipping mask, um, bring in my brush tool, which is here. I promise we will go over the brushes. And, you know, just paint a new texture in here. Uh, again, like I've painted it white, but you can colorize it any color you want. Uh, after the fact, of course. And yeah, so that's it. So some ninja tips there for the layers panel. I think learning how to group and use clipping masks is probably the most important thing you will ever do in the layers panel. So a really quick lesson today, but hopefully like probably one of the most useful, at least I hope so. And uh, definitely try to incorporate these tips in your workflow. It will help you have files that are easier to manage. Well, they, they might be a bit bigger, but you know, like once you get into the habit of grouping things properly and you can change the color of groups, which will change everything in there. So like, if you, you know, you might know everything in one group is like the trees or whatever. And so it's a really good way to keep your files organized. And then, like I said, using really powerful um, color correction tools like the gradient map restricted to certain groups is probably one of the best tips I can teach you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.